Now I will not explain exactly why they are complicated. I will explain. Yeah, I will, I will explain why, but I will not prove it. I will explain what are the tools to show it, and we will see this in the future. Uh, I will see. So if K and G have a compact form, well, it follows the explicit form of proof, but uh, now let me forget what we have seen before. Just it follows also from the fact that K is dense in G. That uh, K meets all uh, compact of the group. That is, G mod K is connected. And uh, for the division G0, act transitive. So uh, I will review this uh, in the future, but now uh, I, I want to be a uh, complete model of this fact. Uh, here, here is the fact. It's called either per time or what is fixed for the uh, For such money, such manifold have a property those are, those are things that some of you I know know very well uh, but I guess not all uh, have the property that uh, every compact group has only place Sure, and hopefully, I will, I will always prove, I will also prove this as a fact. But again, I postpone it to the, to the future when we deal with more precise structure theory of symmetric spaces. This is how uh, they call. 
And uh, this fact follows basically, I mean, this combination of two facts. Uh, if you wish, one is that uh, such manifold uh, satisfied the uh, ket zero axiom for symmetric spaces. I hope uh, most of you know what, what this means. And, and so, and, and this has actually valid the fixed point theorem of Bohr and Fitz. It is valid on, on ket zero spaces. So, yeah. Every every compact set or every bounded set has a canonical uh, uh, center here in your hidden space. If I uh, draw a whatever bounded set, you can find uh, a minimal ball that uh, contains it, and this one is unique and. Uh, the center of this minimal ball that contains it will be fixed by every isometry that preserves this uh, set. And if this set, I mean, if I have a, a compact group of isometries of, uh, of my manifold, and my, the, the, the manifold has this property that I'm describing, uh, illustrating here, uh, then just take one orbit. Just pick one point, whatever point. Take the orbit of it. This would be a K invariant. Uh, subset of the manifold, and the point, the canonical point attached to it, will be a k-invariant point by the fact that it's canonical. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, th this is how this is proven. I mean, once we've seen the geometric reason for that, but this is coming from the, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll remind what the cat zero uh, axiom is. Do you know it? Mm -hmm. no, no. So this is very important uh, axiom in geometry. Um, okay, so again, I'm not proving things. This, these are things that I will get back to it, but I just want to, to have a, a clear view of how, how the argument goes. So this is something that <clears throat> we can uh, assume we have uh, a metric space and uh, with geodesics. We make, let's assume for, that they have a unique geodesic between each point. Now here's a fact that actually is correct for every uh, space. If, if I have uh, uh, three points, I can always, uh, so I have three numbers, distances, A, B, C, and uh, there are three uh, uh, triangular inequalities between these three numbers. And there is a unique up to isometry uh, triangle in the plane, in the usual R2, which is called comparison triangle. So this, this sits inside the X uh, comparison triangle uh, with the same distances. Again, uh, it's unique up to isometries. And that is a weak construct. And uh, <clears throat> I want, the Kazio axiom says that uh, uh, this one should be thinner than that one. I can uh, take a parameter, t, define a point uh, that divides uh, this, uh, this one in, in, in some ratio, t 1 over 1 by 1 minus t. And I can measure the distance between this point here and between those points here. And I want to have inequality for every t. If this property is valid for every uh, three points and for every t, if you have this inequality, then we say that uh, uh, that space x satisfies the head zero uh, property. Zero because the comparison for triangles are in uh, a zero curvature of space. And uh, x is a normal space? No, x is supposed to be a multi-metric space. I'm assuming that we have uh, geodesics between. Uh, uh, I mean, it will be a, ma say, a manifold magnetic curvature. This is a typical example, the, the most important example okay. of, of spaces having this axiom. But somehow it is easier to do metric geometry and not uh, differential geometry many times. So the curvature is some local property, some infinitesimal property, but it basically it is hard to work with. But once we, we have it at every point, uh, negative curvature, then we, we, we see this global metric condition that you said this time. Uh, 
and it's not so hard using this axiom to come up with uh, the, the, the argument for existence of valid centers that I uh, sketched, and hence this one. So again, this, this is a very short sort of view, uh, but the, I, I will come back to it while studying this structure. Uh, more seriously, I don't want to do it now, but uh, I, I want to explain how it is related. I mean, of course, I will be careful not to do it. There's some circular logic uh, in the future, uh, but uh, I will uh, <clears throat> now I explain how these facts uh, help me prove that theorem or the doubt. So take any uh, K form that compact form in G, it acts naturally on this manifold and it has a fixed point. The fact that it has a fixed point means that uh, well, it stabilizes the point, so it, it is included in the stabilizer of this point, which is some conjugation of my original. By maximality, the max, the max point side. So the case I started with, or the, compact form, the, the other compact form I started with, must be a conjugation of my, of my compact form, the one I like. Okay? <clears throat> so uh, that's it. Uh, so I, I, again, I owe you uh, this, and uh, I want also to, uh, to remark that. This argument shows the unique mass or plunge for this and so. that I actually, I mean, you, you might say, okay, I don't care much about uh, uniqueness of the conjugation in the reductive case, but let me emphasize that I use this fact while proving existence. I, I use the uniqueness of the conjugation for some simple ones while proving existence for reductive case. Okay? So really, really my, my, my proof is not complete in that sense. Okay, so back to it, but now uh, I'm assuming, as I said, uh, that uh, given existence in the semi simple case, I have a, a uniqueness of the conjugation and I'm going on to prove uh, existence. Are, are there any questions so far? Okay, <clears throat> so um, here as well, I will, I will not give all the details, but now I think uh, all, all the details should be available for you. I mean, you should, you should know it. It's just part, much of it is part of structure theory that I, I will not review uh, in full, but I think you, you do know. Uh, so uh, I, I would be happy to get a, a feedback from you after I sketch the, uh, the, the proof in, in a minute. But before, let me uh, make a, a super reduction. I assume. I have G now, which is connected and simple, and uh, I may assume that G is, is uh, simply connected. Because if I prove it for a simply connected group, uh, every, every group, every connected semi simple group, of course, have a semi-simple, simply connected one, which is a, which is its cover, right? The covering space of the group, you know, is a group as well. The covering space of, well, now we're talking about the 
algebraic groups. But it's the same as uh, considering those as Lie groups, complex Lie groups. The covering group, the covering space of the complex semi-simple Lie group is a complex semi-simple Lie group, which is simply connected. And um, of course, it, it, if it has uh, a compact uh, dense subgroup, its image will be a compact dense subgroup of, uh, of the group you have started with. So this is a legal assumption. So my group is connected, like again, simply connected. Complex. Those groups having one to one correspondence with, uh, with the algebras. So uh, now, now actually I'm about to do uh, essentially what Vi did in the first place. I don't think he did exactly that because he didn't have a. Uh, well, actually, I don't know. I don't know how, how much of the structure theory uh, that we have now was available for him. I mean, it was available at the time, or it was developed quite at the same time, but I don't know. Probably Vi did it for some classical groups. Essentially, what he did is what we are, what I'm going what to sketch now. Uh, so, so, the title now will be compact forms, compact, and split forms of uh, semi simple. Over the reels, I, I, I know that's why, why you're asking. Uh, those of you style Lie groups uh, know that the SL2 arm is not, uh, is of course not simply connected, but moreover, its universal cover uh, of course project to SL2 R and the, the kernel of the projection is always in, in those cases. Groups is always uh, central. It's the fundamental group of that one, of that manifold. So what, what will it be? Who knows? Okay. The integers. I mean, okay. This is something that uh, I, I will explore in general uh, uh, in the future, but uh, <clears throat> you, you already, I mean, some of you should know it, but uh, you should maybe. Uh, the shadow of it you see here. This is a negative field manifold. This, this should be Euclidean space. Uh, as astrological space, this should be just Euclidean uh, space. So uh, all the homotopy of, uh, of of this guy is is in all the homotopy of of G is in K. G is uh, homotopically equivalent to K. In answer to R. It is homotopically equivalent to its own maximal compact, which is SO2. And the fundamental group will be Z. And this map cannot be algebraic, right? Because uh, the channel group is not an algebraic group. Algebraic zero dimensional group is finite. Uh, so, but this, contact, this is not a complex example. All the complex, uh, this is part of the general theorem that uh, 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 <coughs> simply connected Lie groups are algebraic. Oh, so this, this is not an algebraic group. This is not a matrix group. This is a famous example of a, a Lie group which is not a matrix group. Cannot be represented as a matrix group. <coughs> okay, so, uh, <coughs> so now I'm um, reviewing So, you know structure theory for semi simple groups. You're supposed to know, at least. Uh, 
And uh, when you studied uh, the structure theorem, you, uh, you came up, I bet, uh, with, with a basis. There, there is a natural basis called Chevrolet basis, or some simple groups, that you cook out of the, uh, out of the, of, of the wood eye. Uh, and in fact, if you take a complex semi-simple groups, all those classical, they are all classical, all those classical groups, some sporadic ones, but they are also classical. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like finite groups that we don't play here. Uh, <coughs> uh, it, is, it is known that one can find, actually, I actually did, uh, find a basis which is so, 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 such that all the structure constants are defined over the integers. So the field of definition, actually the ring of definition of complex semi-simple groups is actually the integer. So uh, let, let, let me uh, produce this. If G is uh, complex and simple, I can choose in it uh, a Tortanza value one. So if you are not familiar with those terms, please please let me know. And those of you no, 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 I assume you do. You are. And uh, I, could, I could review this. I, I mean, I, I, I can give a lecture or two reviewing this, but to really understand everything that I'm writing down, if you see it for the first time, you, you need to, to read some by yourself. Okay? Uh, if, if, if this is the first time. Uh, so, algebra. Uh, Associated with the choice of the uh, Tansaba, but we have a uh, voice system uh, and we can choose uh, uh, positivity. Uh, I mean, half of the groups I can declare to be positive, and half to be negative, by, basically by choosing a regular element in the Tantan algebra and who is positive or not. <clears throat> and then I can write G to be H plus uh, well, actually, I can write it in two half steps. Of course, this is simple. Uh, th these are called the uh, root uh, sub algebra. And we have the positive one and the negative ones. Uh, who, who sees this for the first time? This is called root space decomposition, and again, this is part of the uh, of the standard uh, theory of the uh, algebra. And now I'm describing for you. I, I'm reminding you uh, what a Chevrolet basis is. the market of something in H with X beta, it doesn't matter that uh, we have the alpha, the alpha here, it will always use the definition of the guy G beta, so X beta is in G beta, so this is beta of H alpha times X beta, right? This is always the definition, and now uh, 
if I take x alpha and x negative alpha, I'm getting a alpha. So by, by the way, uh, I'm describing now, I'm calling, I will call it in a minute a Chevrolet basis. This is not a basis. I, I'm choosing for each of these components here, I'm choosing one, the x alpha. But in age, I'm, I'm choosing uh, more than enough. The, the dimension of age is the dimension of the number of simple rules, right? But actually, I will choose age alpha for every, for every alpha. So this is more than, I have some redu redundancy in my uh, choice, just to make the, the, the relations nice. Uh, x, no, what is x alpha, uh, x beta, Uh, if alpha and beta, alpha plus beta is, in, is the root of, again, this is some constant time x alpha plus beta and uh, fs zero otherwise. Yeah, it, it, it is applied. Standard presentation uh, of, uh, of a semi simple uh, algebra. Uh, this is a standard presentation of the alpha. It is a basis. Uh, by the way, I mean, there is a closely related uh, notion called self relations. I can, I can take less than these. I can just take the x alpha associated with uh, 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 the simple roots. And uh, make uh, a construction by generation, generate generators and relations. You suppose cell relations is a, a very natural and easy presentation of all semi simple uh, the algebra over the complex numbers and actually over to that. I mean, so it makes sense to talk about the algebras over all the groups over uh, oh, the algebras over Z over finite fields, etc. etc. And uh, in particular, uh, we can define and define accordingly uh, GR, which is just uh, the R span. It 
is called as the title of the suggest a split form. Split or split split form. So I, I emphasize so far mostly compact forms. So obviously this is a, this is a really algebra. And uh, I mean you should check that if you just take the span is real coefficients are closed to brackets. So this is a really algebra. And if I take the, if I tensor it with the complex numbers, I will get my original here. So uh, whenever I have a substructure that if I tensor with a, with a bigger field, I'm getting uh, my original one, I'm calling it calling it a form. And this is called split form. Split means in this form in the Cartan split. So in the corresponding Lie group, it will be an algebraic group, algebraic semi-simple group, and, and the Cartan uh, or the maximal torus of this one will be a split maximal torus. Right? We see we are, so we define the notion of splitness for solvable groups. So R split. R split. Yeah. Split always needs a... Uh, so the Cartan is R split. Yeah. The Cartan is R split. Uh, actually, it is Q split. So again, we, previously I defined the notion of splitness for by groups, which are solvable, solvable connect groups. Right? And... Um, if you, if you give me a, a semi-simple group, I'll say that it is split if the Cartan subgroup is split. If, 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 if I can find a maximal torus, which is uh, split. Okay, so this is the notation. But, but, okay, we, we don't have to, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll come back to this in much more detail in the future. Now this is just, uh, I want to give the right notation. So far, so good. So again, I'm reviewing things that you're supposed to know. Uh, and now, I don't know, maybe uh, some of you have seen this, but uh, I'm about uh, to take this split form and to torture it until uh, it will be as less split as could. It will be completely unethical. So uh, I'll just play with generators and relations. So let me be uh, explicit about it, uh, but maybe I, I wrote this line in my notes, copy it, examples, all examples in my Means uh, I can give you I will not run more than that, I will not only say. If you give me, I don't know, uh, SL and C, then uh, you know what the X alphas are for SL and C, right? This is uh, SL3C. X alpha, if G, alpha, it will be the, the elemental matrices. This, Everything else is zero. Will be one of my x alphas. This will be another, etc., etc., etc. I will have six roots corresponding to these blocks, and uh, and well, I will have six elements over here, which will be the age alphas. Actually, only three of them are. Uh, oh, only two of them are really important. Two because I'm S, SL, actually, uh, are important in order to, to generate the relations and to be related basis. Uh, but just for symmetricity, I will take them all. And uh, so, just do your exercise. Uh, think about the symplectic group and what would be the Chevalier basis of it. If you, if you, if you haven't done it uh, in your life, uh, I, I will not do it here now. Uh, what I don't, I want to do here is this magical construction. Again, I think in this generality, it, it, it's due to our time. Uh, I will define K to be, now I'm defining 
a vector space. I will take a, the sum over my system of all. So I'm taking what is spent not by the age alphas, otherwise I will get GR, but by the I age alpha. So inside my complex uh, Lie algebra, I'm taking those imaginary vectors. Uh, this is just, so this will be the, my complex Cartan. This, is, this will be the piece of the Cartan which is compact. It's like, if you think of the Cartan, this is a Lie algebra, this is not a Lie group, but think of it as the torus, I mean the associated group, the, the exponent of that, will be a, a torus, it will see, see star uh, to the end. If I just take the sum of the age alphas, I'll, I'll get a term of the GR. So it will be R star there. Here I'm taking uh, S1 to the end, right? This, this is kind of, I'm, I'm constructing the reform, the compact reform uh, for you. Uh, and now I'll take, uh, so among the X alphas, uh, I'll take uh, uh, half of them. The I is the root of minus one? I, I is root of minus one. I will not use the, the index in this formula. Uh, take x alpha minus uh, x minus alpha. This one piece, and uh, I'll take our i. I took something of the right dimension, a real vector space, uh, instead of taking, again, when I took G, I didn't write it explicitly, I would, took, I, would, I would take just the same, without the I here, and I will take here, this is the sum over all X alphas. But now I kind of build in anti-symmetricity into the picture, and so uh, I took the, this in, and I said, oh, let's see what I did. And uh, there are some facts which I, I will uh, send you to verify. Uh, so first of all, here's an organization. This on the, on the level of vector spaces. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very easy. If I com complexify, I'll get, I'll get the same as if I would uh, complexify the split form. So this is the real form, at least real form of the vector space. But moreover, uh, check that uh, k is closed for one. So just take, I'm asking you to take elements here, take the basis, so the generating set of these. Basis, as I said, uh, but the generating uh, guy, just taking uh, vectors here and check the connotation relation uh, <laughs> using these uh, those brackets, hence a sub -algebra. Why do you need the eye for the H alpha? For the following. My next line. So so far I didn't use. I mean, uh, you can't just change one sign over here. Uh, we, we, we keeping uh, the, the process in the bracket, but you can change many things. And there, there, are, there are many ways to make this structure, but this way in particular, I mean the following. Uh, Uh, check that, and I'll write first and uh, ask you if it makes sense to you later. Uh, the Keeling form of G is negative there. So, who doesn't know what the Keeling form is? Just, uh, 
uh, as a reminder, uh, if I have If I have a given given a real regime uh, and maybe two elements in G, I can look at add X is an operator in G of G and add Y. I can compose them inside GL G by G. The number. This is called you know, by kappa uh, x y. So Keeling was a student of uh, Sophus Lee. He tried to prove uh, the classification of uh, uh, some simple groups. I think it, you know, simple groups. He, he did quite a lot, but uh, basically he did succeed. I think uh, Henry Cartan. And, um, and, and I think the, the famous criterion is due to Cartan, right? You know, uh, in the books. Uh, there is a Cartan criterion about the killing form, saying that, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not using it now, but uh, you should know it. Uh, uh, G is semi simple if and only if the Cartan, uh, the killing form is, uh, is non-negative. Is, is non so, um, and of course, it is degenerate for uh, some old ones by uh, uh, linear. And um, uh, by the way, oh, I didn't write it down, but I, I can reduce my problems and, and work with uh, with a simple group now or a simple algebra, right? Because every semi simple in the, in the Lie algebra level or passing to simple connected. Case, my groups are actually uh, decomposing to di a direct sign, right? So I'm constructing a, a compact form. I could have reduced my uh, uh, task and, and, and deal with a simple one. Uh, and I'm saying because uh, Ramar, we are write down uh, one thing before saying by Ramar, and K is. So on on a on a simple on if K is gene variant or bilinear form is invariant, uh, it is easy to see that the radical of it, the common kernel of everything, is an idea. If you have an invariant bilinear form on the Lie algebra, its radical is an idea. The radical of bilinear form is everything which is perpendicular to all the, to the world. And uh, so it must be an idea. And uh, if G is simple, it, it cannot be, uh, there, there is no idea. Not, not non trivial idea, so if it is not trivial, it must be uh, actually non degenerate. Okay, this is the proof of Katan's uh, theorem. And, um, but actually, uh, it also, uh, it follows that there is, it is unique. Right? There is a unique, on a simple group, there is a unique bilinear invariant form. Up, up to a model. If you have two, I can take some, col co some linear combination of them uh, such that uh, it, it, it is degenerate, right? If I have two bilinear forms on a vector space, on a complex vector space, I claim that some linear combination of them is degenerate. This is an easy exercise. If the if the two are invariant, so this uh, so it must be that if, if, if the general it must be actually zero. So it showed that up to homotopy, uh, the killing form is a unique invariant form on on the simple Lie algebra. Uh, so far so good. And uh, here's another observation. If K 
decay is definite. Actually, it will never be positive definite. It will be sometimes negative definite. Uh, then G, G, G uh, is uh, compact. This is clearly right because it must preserve that form. It's a group that preserved an, an invariant uh, well, up to normalization positive definite. In a product, so it must be full. Mm. Uh, and this is actually if and only if. And mm -hmm. now I don't know if this is part of the standard course of everyone group or not. All these things I'm saying. I mean, surely uh, the main part of it should be. Uh, but now here is something that I will not do for you. You should check. I gave you all. I gave you all the relations, all the computational relations of those things. I give you the definition of the killing form. Check the killing form on K is negative. negative. Summarize now all this uh, story. Whenever I have a semi simple, simply connected, connected complex group, I take it the algebra, I torture its Chevalier basis in this way, I'm taking the exponent of that, I'm getting a compact thing because of this, I will get something which is uh, the complex form of my origin. Uh, and this is the last step in, in this long reduction that we have done. Questions? Time. So we have a Change the slip. And T is? Uh, so it's not just hmm? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Uh, so let me see. Uh, one time. Slowly. Yeah, slowly. Uh, so, uh, unless you have questions, we can take a uh, start of a break now. So, why K is inside G? Just a minute. Oh, the Alpha level? No, you, oh. you got that. No, but the, the group, the comfort form, the exponent of K. Why is it in... So, okay. I want to uh, construct something on the, on the Lie group level. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the simply connected group, so I'm, I'm using uh, now. Uh, the correspondence between the algebras and the groups. The group condenses so it so is generated by the set minus complex to the minus. Uh, no, no, okay, so forget it. You have a complex Lie group. Think about it as a Lie group. Okay, okay, I'm using complex numbers all, all over again, but if, if you know the correspondence, if you prove a certain correspondence between Lie groups and the algebra uh, over the rings, for real Lie groups, that's fine. Think about this complex group as a real Lie group. And this is, uh, this is, what is, G is, oh, is okay. the algebra, and I'm looking at, now at a sub-algebra, this is a sub-algebra of this guy, G, which is the Lie algebra of big G, capital G. And it's the Lie algebra of something else, which I called right there, uh, big K. So big K will be a sub-algebra of, a uh, sub-group of big G, and this is the required one. So there's a risky closure of this one inside G will be something that its Lie algebra contains this and also its complexification because it's, it's complex. So it must be everything. So the risky closure must be everything. 
seems to have been the connected case. What's it? I mean, actually, all here. Okay? We take a break. Is there... So, next hour, uh, we'll have something completely different.